Boom! Boom! How's it going? How's it going? Welcome to M5 Successful Friends as it is. You all know that if it is on this podcast, M5 Successful Friends, we invite people that are successful in their own right, killing it like it is in the real estate, in the property. Uh, today, I have the privilege uh, of having a cool guy called Zach Yeza, and Zeki is in and out in the coastal lands of South Africa in KwaZulu-Natal. Welcome, Zach. How are you doing? Yeah, man. Thanks, uh, Tanarai. TJ, thanks for having me on board. <laughs> yeah, man. And let the yeah, people yeah, know, Zach. Zach <laughs> <laughs> it's the coast, man. It's the coast. It's the coast. Yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. <Yeah. laughs> Zach, welcome aboard. Uh, you are in real estate in the property space. Um, how did you start and what's your background like? Um, I met you recently, um, not recently, but about a year ago, and we were just chatting about some of the things that you do. Um, but, you know, for the audience, for people that don't know you at all, who is Zach? All right. Thanks, CJ. Uh, my name is Zach Zakele Miaza. Uh, I'm an engineer by profession, uh, but now I'm a full-time property investor. Um, and uh, I was the winner of the beginner category um, of South African property investors. Uh, whoop, whoop. Winner last year. Well done, year. well done, well done on that award. <laughs> TJ was in the big leagues. I won the beginner. Yeah, I man. told you, TJ, I'm coming in two years. Two years. <laughs> <laughs> Two years, I'm taking the big leagues one. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. But that's, uh, that's... yeah, man, I'm the owner of the bus stop. Owner okay. of the bus stop. Um, it's, an, it's a brand that we, we're growing of ethical students, multi-lets, uh, uh, accommodations. We're just yeah. doing things right, man. Providing value to students, providing value to, to um, new professionals as well. Uh, our accommodations just have, it's a one-stop shop, man. Just bring in your bag and live. That's how it should be. Okay, so you got a brand called the Bus Stop, right? Um, who yes. who is the Bus Stop? What what do you do? Um, you give out a glimpse there. Um, where where do you operate the Bus Stop? So so the Bus Stop started. I'll give you a little background. That is, the Bus Stop started uh, as a little project for me, uh, trying to save a little bit of money. Yeah. Um, and I was renting an apartment. Um, and I had extra rooms, so I decided, let me try rent out the other rooms and see if I can make some income. Right. Uh, and that went very successfully. So I then rented, I then rented the next uh, apartment, right. uh, which was downstairs, uh, and put in some tenants. And then uh, some internationals took a liking to the way that the bus stop operates, um, and they just, by word of mouth, just more and more people started coming and more and more people started wanting uh, to stay at the bus stop, which then brought a life to the brand. Um, and I think it was, it was from strategies that uh, I ended up learning with the South African Property Investors Network, which is, which is what I use. It was a rent to rent. And then I ended up buying the property at a very, very low price um, yeah. because I'd looked after it for so long. Yeah. And in that case, so we operate in Durban. Um, we, we looking for, for properties that we put underneath the bus stop brand. So, uh, those properties that, uh, need good management that, uh, also of a certain trust level, we've got a framework that, uh, work with in terms of how we provide a service to. Okay. Zach, you're good. Okay. Cool. Um, so, so, so you are out in Durban, right? And you speak of, um, you know, the people coming out to you, um, and you, 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 your, your, your brand, the bus stop, kind of like it's a, it's a tourist brand. Um, is this the intention, or um, is this by, by mistake? It was a fluke. Um, how did that come to be? So it was, it wasn't intentionally meant for tourists. It's intentionally for, it's multicultural. Uh, I yeah. like when low nationals. Yeah. Um, because how else do you learn about different cultures if the internationals just stay alone um, sure. in their apartments? So I, I like mine having being a multicultural um, accommodation. Sweet, sweet. So how did so you we, start, we, Zach? We, you know, you, you speak of that you're an engineer. What kind of an engineer are you? 
Uh, I'm an electrical engineer um, okay. with the uh, master's in industrial engineering. Uh, yeah, my passion, my passion was in in efficiencies. Uh, it's in efficiencies in in process optimization um, and systems. So uh, I basically adapt that sort of thinking within the property space, which is why I speak about value. Uh, okay. The properties that we've that uh, I've been dealing with, uh, people come and and they see me and they say, "Can you please turn my property into a student accommodation?" Yeah. Um, firstly, I'll then do a financial analysis on what they on what they're really trying to achieve. Yeah. Um, and then I'll also then because we've got a design team, we'll design the space uh, such that we provide value to whoever's coming to rent in that space. That way, we maximize you maximize your return, and also you look after your property. Okay. So how did, yeah, how I mean, we have a, we have our own, we have our own maintenance team. Okay. Good stuff. Well done. Well done on that. But how did you start to think as, a, as an individual? How did you start? How did your game start? Mine, so mine, mine started literally, uh, I, I, when I was staying at home, it, it never made sense to me to move out and pay rent. Um, so I stayed at home for as long as possible. Yeah. Uh, and then when I did move out, when I did move out, uh, my strategy and my idea was, let me buy or rent something whereby I'm not paying the rent. Okay. So, so I started uh, because I was a, as an engineer, I was working as a junior engineer. So you've got a little bit of income. So instead of just renting a two bedroom place, I rented a three bedroom place, which I could just afford. Yeah. Um, but then what I did is then I filled those other two rooms and basically charged a premium because my place, as I said, provided value. Yeah. Uh, so when I was charging my premium, they basically covered my rent, utilities, um, as well as DSTV and Wi-Fi. So that basically meant I was living for free. Um, and I had then disposable income um, to then save. Um, and I started saving because my goal was to purchase the property that I was renting. So I used, I used uh, those people's income to pay my bills and I, and I used my income and I, and I saved. And then when I got the second property, uh, yeah. the second property was then just all, uh, uh, was all then just income um, because then I rented with, with my money, but because it was a bigger property, um, the people fitted the bills as well as started paying me at that, at that time it was 7,000 rand a month. Okay. So I, I, ah. I started then. Yeah. I mean, no, go ahead. Go ahead. No, I was saying, yeah. So, so because they were paying me that amount, yeah. um, that I used to save, and then I was able to put an offer in on the house. Um, so the money that I was saving, that. So I acquired my house on the money that was saved from the tenants that I was uh, housing. And that's how I started my property journey. Yeah, man. Zach, the, this is, um, so I read a lot, right? Um, this is my thing about reading. And um, it is unfortunate that for me, I really started out in property a little bit later. I was, I was married and I already had a family at that time. Tawana was born when we really started this thing. Um, Tawana is hitting 12 in about five days time. However, the, the thing here that I'm seeing is that you had, you had freedom. You, you, were the, you were the only person, you were the captain of your own ship, no girlfriend, no wife, um, and you decided, okay, fine, let me, let me house uh, uh, <laughs> Hey, go back on the girlfriend part. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there was a girlfriend involved in here. <laughs> of course. Oh, <laughs> I like that, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Now, now, now that I'm, I'm pushing the business right now. That's my focus. So there's no girlfriend at the moment. Okay. Cool. Cool. Um. So, so let's go back, right? So, um, I, I, I read a lot about these things about. Um. I think in the states they call it house hacking, right? And um, the concept mm -hmm. is, is fairly the same. So, uh, you go and rent a house. That's what you're saying. Uh, in this case, mm -hmm. you went on to rent a house like a three bed and you let mm -hmm. out the other two beds because you didn't need them right mm -hmm. um so these guys here if you were paying rent of let's say an odd seven thousand 
they could pay 4,000 a room. So now you're on 8,000 kind of like, right? Um, so which means that yeah. you are living for free in that same place. Yes, except, so I, I managed to, because of how I'd, I'd worked the property, I extracted value, which in this example, I was paying rent of 7,000 and I was letting out and getting rental of 11,000. Wow. Because of the value that you're providing on the property. So that's two bedrooms I was letting out at 11,000. My man. Yeah, man. You give people, give people what they want. A nice place to stay that's comfortable, that's fully serviced with, I mean, you just bring your bag and live at the bus stop. That's how easy it is. Okay. So let's talk about the value. What value do you give? I mean, don't, don't, so don't, give, out your whole, to... I, you don't give out your whole and entire IP. <laughs> Uh, but I mean, for a new guy who's starting off, right? Uh, I'm starting off, yeah. I'm down here in Johannesburg or Pretoria, East London, Cape Town. It don't matter. This thing can work, isn't it, Zach? Yeah, right? 100%. So what are the top three things that you would say, if you are to create this type of value and you go out and you, if you can qualify to rent, you will make some money. So I'd say if you, if you want to go greatest value, people like their space. They like personal hygiene. Right. So if for providing value, make sure I usually go with twos to one to a bathroom at maximum. So mostly two people to one bathroom. Um, it keeps the bathroom clean right. and people have the hygiene. Right. Um, part two on the value is when you, when you look, when you consider the full cost, if a person had to live alone, how much yeah. they'd be paying for, for um, individual components so right. break that all down and include it in your rent as one as one price so that if you do that it, again to the person that you you're serving they look at it as value because you've you've you have you've taken out the hassle of having to pay four different bills uh with seven different subscribers you've taken all that hassle out you provide everything so you need to do the complete service that's for the first timer um if you're getting into the student game provide the full service. Um, so full on board, my third this is what you're talking about. So yes, so give, give students what they're there for. They're there for a place to sleep, they're yeah. there for protection, and they're there to study. So if you can provide all those three, a student will be, would comfortably live in your place and look after it. My man. I then, I then yes. Your last, the last thing that I would, I would put on is, don't underestimate the value of good management on your property. Okay. Uh, that, that's to me, because um, I did myself, I lived in the property. I've, I did my own, I'm a handyman as well. So I did, I did my own maintenance. But if you could, to save your, still save you a lot of time and money, get a proper managing agent um, that does maintenance as well. Yeah, but Zach, hold on. Right, so, so I, I'm going to be cynicism here and I'm gonna say, well, but you're renting the place out from someone else, right? And yep. now you are saying that uh, you, I'm the renting it out, so I now need to maintain it myself, but I'm paying rent to the landlord, so why can't the landlord come and fix it up? But I'm also making property out of the landlord's property. So it's just, a, it's just a, it's a, one of those give and take. Yeah. Um, if I don't stress, if I don't stress the landlord with fixing things, they're gonna let me make prop money out of their property. Yeah. 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 So and, that's and, why and besides, I, I, and besides the client that's in the place, it's not the landlord's client. It's your. It's your client. Exactly. Right. So I ser I service my client, and and also I achieve. Um, I get the landlord's uh, objective achieved, which is looking after their property. Well done, well done. Zach, on the same breath, right? So a lot of, a lot of people would say, hey, uh, Zach, you know, but you can't do this because a lot of uh, contracts would come in and say, no, you can't sublet. So that's a hindering, hindrance, the stumbling block. What's your views around that? How do you work around that? So um, the first thing I learned about property, it is about people, not uh, about contracts. Come on. So if you approach, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. If, if you approach, if you approach, whether it's the managing agent or the landlord and you're upfront with your intentions um, and also you can provide them with peace of mind 
uh, in terms of this is how you're going to look at it and take on the risk, take on the responsibility, um, they will then most likely give you that ability to do that. Um, for me, it was something that I was definitely upfront about. Yeah. I started renting the property, uh, looked after it. And yeah. then I said to the landlord, I said, look, I can still pay for the property, but I'd like to make a little bit of extra and I'll take on any sort of responsibility if they do damage anything. So that gave the landlord peace of mind. Right, right. My man. So I think that's the biggest thing. Give the landlord and the managing agent peace of mind. Good. Zach, this is, this is an awesome uh, strategy. I haven't done it myself. Um, I know we've spoken mm-hmm. about it uh, in one or two times. Uh, but if I'm to listen to it mm-hmm. now and dissecting it, and I'm thinking, I meet a lot of guys that tell me, hey, TJ, I don't have money. Where can I start? You don't need money to do this. You don't need money, TJ. That's the nice thing about it. So uh, one of the other uh, strategies that I did is I started connecting with people who are looking for property. Right. So people who are saying, I, I have 5,000 Rand uh, looking for a room. Right. I will go find, I'll find a room that meets their specifications for 4,000 Rand. Right. And then they, and then they, and then rent it for the 4,000, they pay me the 5,000 and I get a thousand Rand for doing nothing. Oh. So that's an easy way of, <laughs> yeah, man, that's an easy way of making money without having money. So yes, property doesn't need money. Uh, and that's just one practical example of how one can, can do it. It's just a matter of servicing your customer. I was listening to Kenny Macro with it just now. Um, uh, and he was saying that you do not need money to make money. The money is made in the, in the mind. And you have to yeah, see the opportunities where others don't see it. And this is it. That's exactly that, TJ. Uh, and I mean, you have a lot of people that chat on Facebook um, and on Twitter, and they're giving away information that no one is using. Yeah. So that's what I've, I've just capitalized on. If people are looking and they don't, they don't want to look themselves. If I just take the effort and I look for them, I can make money. Dude, this is amazing. Um, I'm, I'm like getting goosebumps right now. Um, it is a cool strategy. <laughs> I love it. it. It's not for me as an individual. Um, it takes a lot of boxes for me though, because, um, you, you, you are getting into the game with no money at all. That's number one. Number two, you're connecting the dots between the opportunity and that person who's not seeing it. And in between, you're taking responsibility and giving value to both sides. Right? And, and out of that, you're making a little bit it's of dough. It's a win-win for everyone. Yeah. That's my model that you can ethically make money. You can ethically make money by both, all sides winning. In my, in my model, the landlord wins, the tenant wins, and I win as the middleman. I like it. I like it. Dude, um, if anyone else out there is wanting to do this, where can they find you? I think that this has been one of my, uh, this is the, one of the coolest podcasts where it is short, sweet, and straightforward. You have given immense value. Anyone can go and do what you're doing and give money and, and get some money. Um, but if anyone is to get 100%. stuck, um, how can they reach out to you? Is the bus stop uh, on, on a website? Where are you on social media? Can we freely put all of those details for people to reach out to you? Yes, no, freely put them out. You can uh, definitely find us emails and at info at the bus stop.co.za yeah we on uh, instagram yeah uh, at bus stop sa uh, uh, bus stop yeah uh, we're on all platforms just you look out for the bus stop uh and we'll engage with you you can find us and and, 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 and who's the trust for more on all forms instagram facebook and, and who's the driver of the, the bus? The driver. I'm the bus driver. <laughs> I'm the bus driver. <laughs> bus driver. Bus driver. Uh, only, I only let on the best passengers. And those that aren't allowed, you can't get on the bus. My man, <laughs> Zach, it's been great speaking to you. Um, I, I've learned a lot from you. This is a cool strategy that anyone can implement. 
Uh, I'm glad we're, that we have finally had some time to, to do this podcast. Um, it is going to go live uh, in the next couple of days. But good luck on your journey. Uh, I'm hoping that the bus is going to continue going into di many different places, taking people of many uh, different, uh, different cultures on board. And as the driver, mm -hmm. Zach, takes you away, any other closing comments, Zach, before you leave? Yes, um, I, I must say I, I do enjoy the working with M5 Pro Property Addicts. Yeah. It's uh, good work that you guys do in terms of uh, passive income and the strategy that you utilize. Uh, yeah. My closing words, just for anyone that's wanting to do property, yeah. uh, is don't do it like everyone else. Do it better. And Come if on. you do it better, you'll make money. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, man. That's I it. like that. Those are my closing words. Yeah, man. <laughs> I like that, Zach. Thank you to everyone who's going to watch this. I look forward to, to working with people. Okay, cool. Thanks a lot, Zach. God bless. Cheers. Bye. Thank you, TJ. Oh, Cheers. no, no, no. I should be saying job bless, is it? <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> sure, sure. Bless it. Bye. Cheers. Bye.